that sure was an experience <laughs> packing up my biking kit outside an airport and I was feeling a bit stressed about it but it went fine I mean I've done it and I was so worried about my bike but whew, once we get pedaling I'll be feeling a lot more settled but wow I'm in Norway <laughs> Greetings, having a spot of breakfast, we've got some brioche, some local cheese and um, like little cinnamon pastry things, I've got coffee, half packed up my kit, so actually it's gone quite well so far, continue that, start stashing everything away and then I'm over riding over to Lies Bottom, that's not going to be how you say it, I'm going to totally embarrass myself once again. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a lot of climbing, um, about 5,000 feet of climbing today. Um, basically the whole route is like a steady incl incline um, and I'm going to have to go back through the tunnel again. So just relaxed here. Roll out, day two. Just had a really nice evening so i was absolutely soaked when i arrived and uh yeah pitching up in the rain as quick as i could and it was cold um so yeah got myself in the shower got myself warmed up sorted out went to go and make some food and um i met a girl and we were just chatting and she said her name's anouk she's from the netherlands she's um doing a little solo tour in her car and she said look i've cooked too much would you like some um, so yeah we had dinner together and it was just really nice also met a couple from Germany who are cycling up to Nordkamp which is like a bucket list trip for me um, I've been looking at it for ages and it kind of fueled my wanting to come here um, so all good and I'm now back off to my tent it's absolutely pouring so I should be walking a little faster but look at this Camping with a view. quite lucky again because although it absolutely poured yesterday and half of the ride in pouring rain um, it was a beautiful place um, and then this morning the sun came out and it just helped because as I was packing up I was just drying all my kit um, lots of black cloud like grey clouds coming over so constantly like ah, get, the, get the dry kit away quickly um, but yeah I'm all packed up and yeah looking forward to the day Hello everybody, isn't it fascinating that the sun here doesn't set until half ten? <laughs> so yeah, I flew with my bike today and something new for me, flying with my bike and camping kit and unpacking my bike and putting it all together at the airport so I was worried about it. Um, but it was fine, I did it. Um, and then I, so once I got pedaling, I knew I needed to get food um, and then I need to get fuel for my stove. Um, so I had to try three places for the stove fuel. I thought I was gonna have to go without or just carry on to the next place, but I found it. Um, and the ride was absolutely stunning. It absolutely blew my mind. So I've ridden 35 miles, um, 2,500 feet of climbing, but really lovely gradual climbs. Um, I went through a tunnel um, that was four kilometers long. Um, and yeah, so I've just pitched up enjoying some pasta. I've got my hat on just because you get cold after you've been riding and I don't want to get cold. Um, but yeah, I've brought a lot of kit for this ride because I wasn't quite sure what to expect. And I've heard that when you get high up, there is still snow. And a lady from Belgium, lovely lady that I was speaking to, told me that um, 
there was a lake completely frozen over when they were driving um, through with their camper van. So yeah, I'm excited to see what's in store. But yeah, really happy with the pitch. It feels safe here. It feels calm. It's quiet. Um, just having some dinner and then I'll be getting some kip. Yeah, beautiful place. Just come for a little, well, just to finish my hot drink down by the, the water. <laughs> Day two and a bigger ride in store, 60 miles with 50 miles of climbing to then descend it all in the final 10 miles. A total elevation of 5,000 feet and the ride would take me over to Lisbon. The forecast was dry but as I found in Norway on my trip, the forecast is very localised and changes and of course when climbing high it gets much colder. So someone on my TikTok said I've been thinking about all that rock above you when I was coming the other way and now that's all I can think about These tunnels were amazing and I don't think I passed another car every time I was in one so yeah it was quite the experience down there but equally always felt nice to be back out in the open air current state of affairs right I needed my colder weather kit which is stupidly packed at the bottom of my bag so now I've had to get everything out leg warmers on gabber on got a gilet out in case I need that but I mean I'm, I'm at a thousand feet now and I'm going up to three thousand so it's needed had to be done right you better crack on with warmer cycling kit on I felt much more comfortable if you're cycling in Norway, then I recommend decent layers, arm and leg warmers, base layers, that kind of thing. When I purchased this, I thought it was a lemonade. It turns out it was actually a non-alcoholic beer. Very refreshing all the same. Mega landscape. You know, I was looking up and seeing patches of snow but they're getting more and more frequent a long slug though Imagine living up here. I'd love to know more about people that live here and what they do. Fascinating. Isn't it amazing coming to different cultures and countries? I feel very privileged. <coughs> Now have some descending. <laughs> Raining. Not a terrible spot for lunch. Oh, I didn't. 
do love a deserted ski town. <laughs> oh yes. Rain. It's not the first mountain that I've climbed in tough conditions. Won't be the last. Still going. Scenery had been stunning ever since I arrived in Norway, but it really did feel special riding and seeing snow on the side of the roads. It just felt just next level. Yeah, it was truly amazing up here. Tough with 40 to 50 miles in the legs of climbing now, but yeah, the views really helped with that. It always amazes me that you can start a ride in Jersey and Shores and then you climb and continue climbing and the snow drifts at the side of the road and frozen lakes, it just shows the extreme difference in conditions and yeah, Norway is an amazing place. Signature Lucy thumbs up for the top of the climb there. And finally, the descending started to roll in. But I was at awe at every turn and just couldn't quite believe the scenes that I was seeing. So, for me, a very good day on the bike. Well, I'm back on my bike. Day three, funky gears. Another climb. Straight off the ferry and going upwards. Well, only two cars got off the ferry ahead of me and then just myself on a bike, so looks like I got the climb to myself. Perfect. Day three, I took the ferry from Leesbotten to Songsand, where I rode across the island to the campsite I was going to be staying at. 3,600 feet of climbing, but absolutely beautiful roads again. Climbing to the sound of crashing water, the birds, the smell of the woodland, feast for the senses.
no denying it. This is a slug. Oh goodness. absolutely amazing descent. I didn't feel much of it because it was absolutely rapid and I was just enjoying it and getting in the flow so yeah one for not for the video this time. There's one thing <coughs> I've learned in Norway it is about forecast so it was forecast like thunderstorm crazy rain and this blue sky <laughs> and the other day when it was forecast to be dry all day it poured all day although I won't be surprised if there is something coming in because across the water it does look a bit dark um, which is why I've got my kit packed up now absolutely beautiful but yeah what a place no storm yet So I'm getting the ferry now over to Ombo um, and there's not many ferries off there again so I've got the choice of 11.20 or half one so I'm going for the 11.20 as my partner had said one, the 1.30 one can be my backup plan. Um, so yeah not there to cycling today, um, still lots of climbing um, but yeah a bit of a steady day, I could do with it really, I wake up really tired and really needed two coffees to get me going. <laughs> Um, yes, yeah, so I'll just be riding over to my camping point um, and let's hope this nice weather continues. Glorious. Back to it. This time in jersey and shorts. This was to be a day of ferry hopping. Four ferries and five bike sections in a day. The ferry to Ombo, ride across Ombo, then a ferry to Judaberg, change and another ferry to Helgoy, ride on to the next connection at Neishim and then the last ferry of the day over to Ned Stand or Ned Strand, finishing in the campsite um, for the day. Got some serious bikepacking Jenga going on, which I don't love, but that leads must, it's too hot. It has to be the trip with the most variable conditions. So we've had snow, we've had rain, we've had sun, we've had wind, everything. And yeah, that might tell you a little bit about what to expect if you come to Norway, I think. There's basically two roads on Ombo, um, and we're gonna be going soon left to Eatsund. Apologies for the pronunciation. Norwegian friends, please correct me. Um, yeah, and that's where I'll be getting the ferry from. the section riding from Helgoy to Neishim and I really enjoyed it because you rode over these amazing bridges and causeways and also the route was more rolling rather than some of the climbs I've been experiencing and just really nice scenery and it was relaxed and quiet so yeah another enjoyable part of the ride.
and then I had some time to wait for the ferry overlooking the water and seeing a storm rolling in um, but yeah another lovely relaxed quiet spot and then this ferry had super comfortable seating after the rain came sun all weathers in a day I think I'll be even a bit sunburned what a day Finally a tailwind and a bit of time just to push on to the final stop of the day where I would be camping for the night. So hello from the beach. Um, I arrived at this campsite and it seems to be completely empty. Um, I was umming and ahhing about where to even pitch my tent and I'm pitched somewhere I'm pretty sure it's not a usual tent pitch but everywhere else looked a bit close to some of the the static lodges that are here. Um, there seems to be more lodges than pictures, so... Totally empty, so just cooking a spot of tea. Pasta, which is a camping classic. And um, rookie error, my power bank's dead and I've gone to charge it and I only have the Euro plug, not the USB plug. Um, and I've looked all in the facilities here, I can't see anything suitable. So yeah, I'm gonna need reception to open tomorrow. If it opens, who knows? Um, yeah, so take it from there. It's been a storm brewing in the distance, but we seem to have missed it. But yeah, pretty good day. With the place just about to myself, it was lovely to stroll along the water here and just Enjoyed being in a beautiful spot with no one around. Day five, back on the road, jersey and shorts, continuing my journey north. a nice little lunch stop. I'm on the Eurovelo one route now, um, I think it's the North Coast route um, and as much as Eurovelo is great I often find the routes are quite, although they're really safe and they're often traffic free and it takes you off the road, um, they just feel a bit functional like it's kind of like commuter type routes and um, so I'm actually quite glad of the easy miles just to tick over today because I'm a little bit tired after a few days of lots of climbing um, but when it comes to tours they're often not routes that I would necessarily choose I found this when I did my Europe European tour before um, yeah just something to consider um, so yeah miles ticking over now I had some food and I'll ride a bit better now I've I've um, satisfied my hunger um, yeah I always think with these trips as well you know the cycling's one bit but actually the looking after yourself is something that can be quite challenging sometimes you know it's it's covering your basic needs but you know finding a place to camp food water you know the navigation all of those sort of things and when you're solo you've got to think about all those things for yourself um yeah so there's lots to consider but i seem to thrive on it that just riding from a to b um and looking after myself in between and seeing some wonderful scenery so yeah it's what it's all about for me <laughs> Me when you're struggling to find somewhere to camp and I've been down so many little nooks and crannies and then I take a turn down a track and there's nothing at the end of the track and there's this
Just packing up some kit and the midges have finally caught up with me. I seem to have avoided them on all my Scotland trips and here so far. Um, but yeah, stand still for too long and oh, you've got them all over you. Um, yeah, I had a really good night's sleep, which I was really pleased about. It's funny with wild camping, if you find the right spot and it's a lot about trusting your gut, um, you just know it's right. So I was scouting out spots for what felt like ages and it can be like that sometimes. Um, and when I came across this one, I just knew it was right and I just felt comfortable. Um, yeah. Nice little breakfast stop. <laughs> Bikes here. So this is a funny coincidence. I was in the supermarket and I met Andre, who is from the Netherlands and cycling to Nordcap. We got chatting and he said he met a French couple also cycling to Nordcap. I said, hey, me too, a few days ago, and he said, I have that number, I'll message them. It turned out that Jen and Thibaut were camping just 300 metres away from us, so we went down and met them and chatted. I joked about how very French the breakfast was, meats, cheese, bread, coffee, avocado, and I realised I really need to up my breakfast game. But how amazing to meet other cycling travellers on the road, and we had such a nice chat. How nice it is meeting fellow bike travellers on the road. So I met a French couple at Lisbon a while back and then they were just down the road and because uh, I met another cyclist in the Joker grocery store um, and he told me he was following a couple who were on their way to Nordcap. I said I met a couple who uh, were on the way to Nordcap and he said they're just down the road. <laughs> So I just went and uh, met up with them all and we sat and had a chat together and it was great. So yeah, windy day today. After meeting and chatting with new friends, I really did feel an amazing spirit. It was a windy, headwind kind of day, but the roads were flowing. It's a head down and pedal kind of day today. I'm on a descent and it's still hard work. Strong northerly wind. Sometimes it's nice to enjoy a little glass of wine at the end of the day. Cheers. So I made more friends at the campsite when a German couple arrived. They were also cycling to Nordcap and had recently cycled across New Zealand. It was great sharing stories of bike travels together and so nice to meet like-minded people from other countries. Great to meet you, Karina and Matsy. So I'm off the final ferry of the trip. 
just said goodbye to my cycling friends that I've met along the way. Had a nice little chat on the ferry and on the bike path now, last leg to Bergen. It's been a slog for the final stretch, still a couple of climbs to go but rolling, groveling to the finish now. So as is often the case, my video eddings are never great, but I arrived into Bergen and what an adventure. One week, 260 miles-ish, around 21 feet, feet of climbing and many stories along the way. So now just to find a bike box for my flight and get myself home. So guys, second bike shop um, and I found a bike box. Thank you Trek. Oh, the cycling community great and the guy said yeah you can store it home the night for free so great stuff so I've been worrying about that. The first shop I went to they use all the boxes so they didn't have any free but yeah this is a nice shop they've got some seriously nice bikes. Um, yeah so let's go.